Awards. And joining me now is photographer Ron Malott, who is going to be featured at the Orchard Lake Fine Arts Show this weekend. Now, Ron is actually based in Bloomington, Indiana, but of course, making it local because he is at the Fine Arts Show this weekend. Good morning, Ron. How are you? Good morning, Erica. I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. great. Thank you. Glad to have you with us this morning. So, you have a background in biology. How did that get you to photography? Well, actually, I started first in uh, photography. I started in the fourth grade. I uh, got my first camera. Didn't even know I wanted a camera. Didn't know what photography was. But for some reason, which I will never be able to understand fully, it touched a chord in me. And it was became a way of my expressing things that I saw. And so that was in place long before I became a biologist. And then a biologist kind of played wonderfully into being a nature type photographer. Right. So you specifically photograph nature. And what is it about nature that excites you and makes you want to turn it into artwork? I, I love the way that, that ecology in nature blends together all different kinds of animals and plants uh, in different environments. And the beauties that a lot of nature you can see it from a grand scale, from a distance, but you can also look very, very close up and see beauty in very close up items that most people won't see, it's there. So the challenge is always how my ability to see things and to capture them technically with, with my cameras. Yeah, so I see that you do a lot of landscape photography, but then you also do this close up stuff that you were just talking about. Tell me a little bit about the different cameras you may use when you're photographing a landscape or something close up? Sure. When I shoot landscapes, I shoot medium and large format film. I'm still sort of an old school photographer. Um, and I shoot a large format Linhop Technica 4, 4 by 5 view camera, kind of like what Ansel Adams and others used to shoot. I'll put a clock over your head, a sheet film holder with two pieces of film in it. But the film is four inches by five inches, so it, it creates a big, big image. And then when I, sh and I also shoot a medium format that has that capability of uh, view cameras to shoot. And then the macro work, I used to shoot 35 millimeter. I've been switching that to digital because it allows you to do what's called image stacking. And image stacking, um, most lenses when you shoot, the lens is sharpest at about f8, f11. But when, when you shoot film, you're stuck with f-stop and shutter speed and you have to shoot really stop down. So you lose a lot of that sharpness with uh, digital photography and what they call image stacking, I can shoot multiple images, sometimes 20, 30, 40 images in a stack to get everything sharp from front to back. So when you look at it, there's no softness, you get depth to the image that isn't uh, readily available to see unless you're looking at it with your eye. And people like that, it looks yeah. real to them. Do you have a favorite type of camera to shoot on? Probably the Linhoff 4x5, because when I got hooked on, um, four by fives, it just gives me so much control over what I want to shoot and how I want it to render. And uh, it slows me down too. It makes me think, I think people tend to think the camera is the ultimate. No, the camera is a tool. It's how I use it. So when I see a scene, it makes me slow down and go, do I really see something here I want to photograph before I go to all the effort to break the camera out? Or is it just pretty to look at? And if I see that it's really, really a good image, then yeah, I can capture it exactly how I want to. Yeah, and talking a little bit about your style, tell me your philosophy when it comes to photography and artwork. Well, my, my philosophy is kind of, because it's about vision, it's about how I see, I try not to copy anything that anybody else does. I try not to go to places other people go. I usually get a topographic atlas and I go explore back roads and explore creeks that show waterfalls on them. And I just spend my time trying to see what I can see in the environment. And I try to predict like this one you've got up on the screen of the um, Antelope Valley Poppy Preserve in California. Sometimes you get lucky. That storm, for example, that's a historical snowfall event. First time in 87 years they've seen snow in that part of the Mojave Desert. And sometimes you just get lucky. <laughs> you can think it all out, you can plan it all out but sometimes you just get lucky. But then most of the time I'm thinking it out and saying, okay, pretty to look at, not a good scene, or yeah, I really like this, but I need to come back at a different time. I'm not here at the right time. I need clouds. I need 
uh, what kind of clouds do I need? Uh, do I need other elements in the picture and then come back when those happen? And your imagery has been published all around the world. Is there a publication that you're most proud of that your artwork has been featured in? I think probably initially I was published some in Audubon and Sierra Club. And I really, as a biologist and as a outdoor photographer, um, I really kind of like that. And then sometimes in uh, calendars where people have a whole month to look at my image, or if I have multiple images in the calendar, I get a few months of their visual pleasure. So that's good. So this weekend, you're going to be local with us at the Orchard Lake Fine Arts Show. What can people expect to see from you this weekend at the show? Well, they'll be able to see um, a, a variety of images like you're showing on the in the background. Um, so I, you'll see macro close-up photography. You'll see more of the intimate landscape where it's a, a portion of the landscape. Um, you'll see I have large frame pieces. I have canvas pieces. I have matted artwork. Um, but you'll get to see the breadth, a, a good sampling of the breadth of what I like to look at, what I see when I go on a photo shoot, and what I'm able to capture when the, when I'm uh, really, when I'm there, like those blue bonnets, you know, that's in the hill country, that's a spring shot. They don't come up every year, but when they do, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And this and is patterns in a hand-blown glass vase. It's very, very close up. And I know you travel and do art shows all the time, but what are you most looking forward to specifically this weekend at the Orchard Lake Fine Arts Show? I like the interaction with people when they come in. Um, to me, the definition of art is how somebody responds to something that somebody else created. So when people walk in, they don't know who I am, they've never met me, they see a piece hanging on the wall and they go, wow, look at that. And they just stop and they, stand there and stare at it and you can see by the expression on their face it means something to them it touches them in a way that i can't predict or script often that they can't even understand why they stop why it's resonating so with them but it's beautiful and then when they turn around and go like i really like this can i take it home and i'm like sure and talking about those interactions that you're able to have with your customers and i'm sure that you have so many of them all the time with traveling is there a interaction that comes to mind that really inspired you at an art show or anywhere it may have been with a customer? Actually, there was one, there's been a few, but one of the ones that uh, really touched me the most, there was about a 12 year old girl that came into a show. I was in Mystic, Connecticut. And I had this shot of, of an abbey uh, in Galloway, Scotland. It's an 860 year old abbey. And there's a woman statuary at the left front of it. And I call it um, the shepherdess because I feel her role is to take care of the flock of souls out there in the graveyard. And this 12 year old girl came up, she just fell in love with it. And she spent her own money, not her parents' money, she spent her own money that she had earned to buy it. And it was the first time I'd had the piece out. So things like that are just exceptionally touching to me because it moved her in a way that most things don't and never probably very few things in life will. And that was just beautiful to see her spend her money on a uh, piece, yeah. Yeah, and on the topic of touching things in your career, is there a certain photo shoot you've been on that touched you the most? No, I get asked that a lot, but because I, some of them are, are really challenging because they're, they're not particularly fun sometimes. Uh, I went to Scotland for 29 days and only had six and a half days I could photograph because the weather was so bad. But what I was able to see, even on rainy, nasty days, was beautiful landscapes, um, the abbeys, the castles, a lot of beauty. Uh, I love the Desert Southwest, Monument Valley, uh, Garden of the Gods, Grand Canyon. Um, and I love the UP of Michigan. Not because you guys are in Michigan, but it's one of my favorite places to photograph because it's so diverse. Uh, and there's so much beauty there. It's, it's all in my ability to, to see it. It's there. I just have to find it. Yeah. Well, Ron, thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see you at the Orchard Lake Fine Arts Show this weekend. But for those that won't be able to make it to the Orchard Lake Fine Arts Show, where can we find you? I have a website. It's uh, N-A-T-G-A-L the, for the first three letters of Nature and Gallery, which is my business, the Nature Gallery. So it's N-A-T-G-A-L at Zenfolio, Z-E-N-F-O-L-I-O dot com. And it has um, galleries for all different kinds of work shows you how I can uh, do virtual fittings and put it in your house. So you'll see uh, actually a lot more there than I could ever show in the booth.
Well, that, that, you. <laughs> that is great. We look forward to seeing you this weekend and great talking with you this morning.